status, we have the bulba conjunctiva. So bulba, this is the conjunctival phonics, and here is the palpebral conjunctiva. In a condition such as an infection or an allergic reaction, there could be inflammation of these layers. So that can lead to red eye. Now you might have heard this word before. The conjunctiva is a layer which covers its present on top of the sclera all the way to the limbus. This is the limbus starting point. If you are to take a look at the eye, here is the point of the limbus. The point in which the sclera, the white sclera is going to join to the cornea. Here is the cornea. So the conjunctiva will line surface like this and it's a relatively avascular structure. What does that mean? There are blood vessels present. So there is going to be conjunctival blood vessels. And one thing about these blood vessels, any blood vessel which is growing in the eye is a problem. We will learn more about that in the retina. But neovascularization, that is a new blood vessel formation, it's a problem when it comes to the eye. We don't want that. Now, let's talk about conjunctivitis and the causes. First of all, the most common cause is viruses. Just like most infections of our respiratory tract, viruses are the most common cause. Bacteria, less common. Allergic, it is more common. It is common. And the way you distinguish between an infection or something allergic is by checking if both eyes are affected in the beginning itself. So allergic reactions affects both eyes most of the time. But viral, bacterial and infections usually begin with one eye. But it can both spread to the other eye. Bacteria spreads easily to the other eye. And viruses, if you remember from respiratory tract viruses, usually they produce a watery discharge. Unlike bacteria, so uh, when it comes to respiratory tract infections, when it's just viruses, you get clear mucus. Same concept here. When bacteria superimposes on the viral infection, so the virus is infecting already, and bacteria also comes and joins here. Then they start to produce a more colored discharge, white color, yellow color, different discharge. Same here, except that in this case, it could it starts with the bacteria, and that will produce a more colored discharge, which can cause the lids to stick together, especially after sleeping. Now think of it like this: think of this region producing a gum-like structure and once you close your eyelids once you close your eyelids then what happens is it's a gum it's going to make it very difficult for you to open the eye you can see swelling of the conjunctiva and obviously red eye and there's going to be irritations uh, the common symptoms it's going to be a swollen eyelid now, bacterial conjunctivitis. Here are some features. Sudden onset, mostly unilateral, and can spread to the other eye in 2 to 5 days. Produces grey, yellow or green discharge. And if there is excess discharge, you need to think of gonococcus. Excess discharge. So there's three diseases, three conditions, which needs urgent and long-term management. The second one is chlamydia trach... Okay, it's, it causes a condition called trachoma. We'll learn about that. This is a very serious condition. And again, we have the chronic or recurrent conjunctivitis. So these three conditions require strong and aggressive therapy. 
matting of eyelashes that is because of the gluing of the eyelashes which can cause significant irritation and then there's the foreign body sensation so that is obvious this uh, substance which is not supposed to be present and the eyelid may appear puffy eyelid is going to be over this and uh, there's going to be the conjunctiva the palpebral conjunctiva it depends on the location of the infection it will appear puffy usually bacterial once resolve in two weeks so think let's take a look at the process patient comes here's our patient he decides he doesn't want treatment so in two weeks he's fine but then he decides he wants treatment so within two days to three days he will be fine it depends on how strong the symptoms are if the symptoms are relatively mild they usually will not go for treatment but if the symptoms are serious such as let's say there's excess pus production the doctor must evaluate you for gonococcus that is let's say gonorrhea gonococcus conjunctivitis and the causative agents in children include streptococcus pneumonia and haemophilus influenza if you learned pneumonia you will learn that these are the pathogens which are most commonly causing that disease same pathogens here different diseases but same pathogens and in adults we have the staphylococcus and the streptococcus species treatment the moment these patients come with pyrrolin discharges or anything like that you start topical antibiotics but if it's a serious condition you need to go for systemic antibiotics so topical eye drops versus systemic conjunctivitis caused by viruses and it is the most common cause which is caused by this group of viruses the adenoviruses and it occurs as epidemics the reason for that is because they are transmitted mainly from this contaminated water so that can cause the transmission of these viruses to the eye to the conjunctiva causing the symptoms acute red eye watery discharge see i'm talking about differential diagnosis here how to differentiate between these two conjunctivitis okay conjunctival swelling a tender preauricular node and sometimes you get photophobia and a foreign body sensor treatment is usually supportive and uh, for the pain you can usually give cold compresses and topical vasoconstrictors to reduce the inflammation and topical antibiotics you don't give it because it's a viral infection and also unlike respiratory tract infections secondary bacterial infections are rare so these patients must wash their hands more frequently next let's talk about a more serious condition this is a condition that usually affects males living in tropical climates So what happens is these patients will present with red eye usually young males age 3 to 25 it's a chronic bilateral inflammation of the superior and the limbal palpebral conjunctiva now what does this happen due to it is a allergic disorder so it is not contagious that means you cannot transfer it from a person to person and usually occurs during spring season and summer symptoms severe itching with thick gropy discharge we'll look into this and a history of allergies or infantile eczema that is they are more prone to atopic diseases atopic means allergic so signs large conjunctival papilla 
that is hypertrophy of the of the conjunctiva we'll learn about that on the back of the superior tarsus area of superficial punctate keratitis we we'll learn all of these sterile corneal shield ulcers loca located superiorly then the treatment now the treatment is mainly attempted to alleviate symptoms and prevent exposure to the allergen it's an allergic reaction you can use cold compressors to soothe and lubricate and wash away the allergens and topical decongestions which can cause vasoconstriction Okay, sorry. So you can uh, basically try to stop the blood flow to those areas which can help reduce the inflammation and also you can give them antihistamines which I'm uh, going to stop the mediators of inflammation. Now for severe cases, you might have to give topical steroids and eye diseases. This is a point which you need to highlight eye diseases you only give steroids topical steroids for a very short time you as a doctor you need to tell these patients you should only take the medicine for four days or whatever number of days needed because it can cause secondary open angle open angle glaucoma This is important. This is a very important fact that you need to know. And also, you can stop the degranulation of mast cells by giving a substance such as chromolim sodium. And also, antibiotics, which. So, the condition is always chronic. So, you need to give the treatment for a long time. Now, let's take a look at this properly. Let's take a look at what these ropey discharges and everything are. So let me draw an eye. You invert the eyelid. That means you take the eyelid and you push it down. Kind of push the eyelid down. And your eyes, this is your pupil, will be present like this. So the cornea will be on the pupil. Now, the first thing, there's going to be papilla. You will see these white, whitish regions of hypertrophic growth. Lim. So, you will see conjunctival papilla. You can see this here. And usually this starts small, but they can form into giant cauliflower like papilla. The next thing is something called the corneal shield ulcers. So as the name says, it is going to look like a shield present on the superior surface of the uh, cornea. Corneal shield ulcers. These are the symptoms, but you get a ropey discharge. What does that mean? It looks like this. The discharge looks like this. This is what you call the ropey discharge. Next, we'll talk about a disease, an infection, which is a community-born disease. Like uh, the WHO is involved in this because it is a community-born disease which they try to prevent by mass antibiotics. So this is the mainstay of treatment. To the whole population, they try to give this antibiotic because this is caused by an organism which is transmitted from the common fly by the common fly so these this disease this bacteria is transmitted by the common fly and what does that mean this must be an area which is underprivileged with poor conditions of hygiene this trachoma is caused by a chlamydia tracker trachomatis sorry Chlamydia trachomatis and also can be spread from eye to eye because of sharing towels and it is airborne. This is an airborne disease. And 
this fact is important. The leading cause of preventable blindness in the world, especially in children and women, because men interact more with children. Now, what happens? Let's take a look at this whole process. There's going to be infection of the conjunctiva, which can lead to inflammation. Then there's going to be scarring. And entropium can occur, which can lead to trichiasis. Trichiasis, sorry. This is when the eyelids, the eyelashes brushes on the eye. And then there will be damage to the cornea, which can lead to blindness. Now, as we can see here, there's going to be scarring. This is a mainstay of that. And this time, there's no papilla, but we get follicles. We'll look at all of this. And keratitis, inflammation of the cornea. And it can range from the epithelia, the anterior epithelia, all the way to the stroma. And it can actually involve the whole layer of the cornea. Now, progressive conjunctival scarring. This is the problem here. It can cause trichiasis, we we'll learn about this, and psychiatrical scarring entropium. And also destroy the goblet cells which are present in the conjunctiva, resulting in dry eye. Actually, goblet cells are also present. Yeah, yeah, it is present in the conjunctiva. And end stage trachoma is characterized by severe corneal ulceration and opacity. It's going to be severe corneal ulceration and opacity. And let's take a look at how this disease progresses. First, I'll talk about what happens here. Now, this time, I'm going to draw an inverted upper eyelid and the normal but damaged the entropied entropium the eyelid. So we have the eyelashes which can irritate the cornea and that can lead to so this can lead to scarring damage to the cornea leading to blindness next we'll take a look at these follicles this time they are follicles so that means there's going to be a lymphoid involvement that means our immune system is creating these this is not hypertrophy and you can see the follicles here. Next, the next situation. Okay, let me just check something. Yeah. Let's talk about the WHO classification of trachoma. Now, the way to remember this is, the first word is trachoma. The second word is a mnemonic. F, I, S, T. So, the way to remember that is, F, I, S, T. Actually, you need to add the word O also. Let's go into details. First, is going to be follicles then there's going to be severe inflammation third is scarring fourth is trichiasis in which the eyelashes touch the cornea and finally, this will lead to corneal opacity. So this WHO classification is very important. So in the second stage, you can see there's going to be severe inflammations. So it appears really, really red. The third one, you can see these white scars. Fourth, you can see the entropium. The and finally, you can see the cornea has been damaged, leading to corneal opacity. 
and the treatment as you know the WHO loves these kinds of abbreviations this is actually a, a par huge part of their uh, community outreach projects where they put words like this first is surgery next antibiotics and this antibiotic azithromycin is the name you need to know trachoma antibiotic is azithromycin so usually it is given in a prophylactic way to the whole population and facial cleanliness is important to prevent flies being attracted remember this is a disease of overcrowding and poor sanitation and environment should be kept properly next we'll talk about a condition called pterygium pterygium now what is that this is usually the patient comes to the hospital due to tissues growing over the eye it's a cosmetic concern and earlier i said if we have okay uh, this usually begins its growth from the medial aspect it comes like this and it's vascular tissue and that i said is bad we don't want vascular tissues growing so it comes and comes on like this and this can cause an interference with the precorneal tear film so on the surface of the cornea we have the tear film and that can be uh, interfered with leading to dry eye syndrome now the next thing this growth can obscure the visual axis of the eye so these patients will not see a very clear image they will see a more diminished image and as you can see it's a raised whitish usually triangular like it has different parts edge of fibrovascular tissue now look at this 90% are located nasally that's what i said they start from the medial side they are more common in warm dry climates or patients who are chronically exposed to irritants such as smoke or dust you can see here this is the removal of that the pterygion this is the surgery you cut off that whole series of tissues and it's vascular so you can see the amount of bleeding and you can see there has been some sort of damage to the cornea which luck which hopefully will come back to normal the treatment you follow up and if it is continuously growing you do surgery the next one is going to be some other accumulations in the eye okay the first one pinguicula this is a degeneration of the um, conjunctiva you can see this yellow degeneration next we have tumors so it could be benign it could be malignant and if it is malignant it is usually a squamous cell carcinoma it's and remember these are usually gray grayish color again pathology and next the presence of this bleeding conjunctival hemorrhage it usually occurs with hypertension or diabetes and also it can occur due to lack of sleep and most of it it resolves spontaneously when you rest it will come back to normal